Hello, my name is Marcus and today we're going to be creating this. So let's start by pre-comping this text here. So Control Shift C, there we go. Just call it text. Bam, a lama ding dong. Go back here into the main comp. Now let's start creating the displacement that is going to control everything. So up in layer, new, solid. There we go. Let's just call it displacement. There we go. And let's apply a good old fashioned cell pattern. There we go. You can do a bunch of weird stuff with the cell pattern. So first of all, let's start making it into plates. So we get these flat weird thingamabobs here. And we're gonna set the, and we're gonna set the disperse all the way down. So we get like these nice squares. And now we have like the basis for the effect. So let's start control shift C to pre-compose. Move all attributes and just call it displacement. There we go. Since we want to attach the values of this effect to a control layer, let's start by doing that first. So new layer in your main comp here, null object and call this bad boy control. Oh yeah. And now let's apply a slider controller. There we go. Double click on that bad boy and call the first one here glitch. Whoops. Evolution. There we go. Now we're going to duplicate this bad boy and call it reveal. Uh, there we go. Reveal evolution and duplicate that bad boy once again and call it reveal amount. There we go. Now we have the three main sliders that we're going to use. So let's go back into our displacement here and let's start attaching these things to those sliders. So let's out click on evolution here and write comp because we're going to refer to a composition and then quotation marks and then uh, call it whatever your main comp is called. So glitch after effects tutorial, there we go, dot layer, and then quotation marks and refer to your control layer. There we go. And now add effects, choose the one with the parentheses, quotation marks. And now we just want to choose the uh, glitch evolution. There we go. And at the very end, you just write a new parentheses and one because you want to refer to the first value in the slider controller. Otherwise, it doesn't work. There we go. So now we have that first thing so we can animate this stuff. And now let's start playing around with these things here. So we can even make like this the main size, something along these lines. Now you can duplicate this bad boy and make one that's even considerably larger and set it to multiply because we wanted to inherit the dark parts of the of the next layer. So we create complexity by having several of them and duplicate it again. And then you can make this one quite small. So very down into detail because we want those nice small little details that will add a lot of complexity to it. And now let's create the reveal layer, the layer that is going to basically reveal all this glitchiness in your main composition. So go up into layer new and solid. There we go. We can just call this reveal. There we go. And apply a good old fashioned, what you might call it, fractal noise. So first of all, instead of noise type soft linear, I'm going to set it to block. So we get these nice pixel shaped things. Now you could actually use this for displacement instead of the cell pattern, but uh, splitting it up into layers gives you more control. So I prefer to use this as a reveal layer. And you can just crank up the contrast on this thing quite a lot because we're primarily just going to use the brightness to reveal it. There we go. So let's out click on brightness and let's uh, basically copy paste the expression from the other layer. So just copy. I just pressed E twice to reveal the expression. Now I'm going to click here and paste and I'm just going to change the settings a smidge. I'm going to uh, make this reveal amount. If you remember, we made that effect. Now we also want to have some movement and some organicness to this reveal. So let's out click on evolution here. And once again, copy this expression, paste. And instead of amount, we're just going to call it evolution. If you remember, we created that as well. Evo blue. Why aren't you? Why aren't you appearing? Reveal evolution. There we go. Now we have everything attached to the sliders. And now last but not least in here, we need to apply a tint effect. Double click on that bad boy and an 
on malt effect. This effect is free and I'll uh, link to it in the description. It just removes the black from the frame. So as you can see, if we click it off, there's still black, click it on, no more black. Now we're gonna set the tint here to 50% brightness in both the black channel and the white channel. Because that way displacement uh, will look at 50% gray as no displacement at all. So let's go back into the main comp. So let's apply our displacement map on our text. So displace, displace among, double click, and set this bad boy to look at the displacement, effects and masks, just in case we want to modify it. Then luminance channel for both channels. Let's start playing around. So maybe minus 30 and this one we can crank up to over 100. So we see we're starting to get this nice uh, distortion uh, glitchiness here. And we can already keyframe this bad boy. So let's go up into the control layer and set the brightness all the way up, which means that there will be no displacement at all. And just keyframe this, go to the beginning and let's just crank it all the way down. So something along uh, these lines or something, you can take it as much as you want. So it just fumbles here. And now let's start playing around with giving it some more life. So glitch evolution, we can crank this up quite a smidge. We can alt click on it and apply a, an expression called posturize time. And I'll explain what this means in a second. Set to 10 and then set time times, I don't know, 1,500. See now it's glitching all over the place, but it is not doing it every single frame. That's the cool thing about posterized time. It basically reduces the resolution of your frame rate. So if you say 10, it's going to update 10 times per second. So that's the really cool part. And now we can apply the same expression onto the reveal evolution here. I'll click paste and let's take it down quite a smidge. We want it to be at a different rate than the other evolution so that it looks like they're alternating and glitching each by themselves. So see like this, we we'll already get these nice glitchiness going on. So now let's start playing around with adding some color. So duplicate this displacement here. Let's call it Kala, like Brett's do. Now let's apply a toner effector, which I cannot write, double click. Let's set it to Pentone because we want all five colors. And set the first one here. Let's set it to some nice cyan, you know, some nice sensual cyan. Next one could be magenta. And the uh, dark tones here. Let's supply a nice orange here, a nice orange color. And set the mid tones to actually be black, because as you remember, we set the mid tones to be perfectly gray, which means that when it reaches the gray, it'll just be black instead. So it'll just shift between these colors. And now let's make it visible here and look at those colors. We can already now set it to screen so that it blends with the text. And let's apply some more effects here. So first of all, the unmold, because we wanted to in only inherit the color and just ignore the black, basically. Now let's apply a set matte effect here because we want to follow the alpha of the text. So make it look at the text, set it to effects and masks. And already now we got some deliciousness here. And right now it's not going to be obvious the, the colors, but we're going to apply more effects to the text later on. That is going to make it seem quite cool. So let's apply a glow effect as well to this text here. Let's set it to like 47 something. Set the, the blending mode to screen, something a little bit more noise. And we can just play around with the glowness here. Um, something like the us. Now you can duplicate it and set the threshold a little bit higher, increase the radius, something like this, give a little bit more heft. Uh, once again, duplicate it, give it even more heft, uh, decrease the brightness a smidge, increase the threshold. So see, you start to get like these nice glowy glitchiness, but only on the color layer. So as the text reveals, you'll see it actually doesn't glow. So already now we've got some sexiness going on here. Now let, we can also uh, start applying some the streaks, nice glitchy streaks, who doesn't love streaks? So just duplicate the color here and call it streaks, bam, bam, ding, dong, and just uh, delete all but the first glow here from the effects. And let's apply a directional blur, double click on that bad boy, put it below the glow, and even a curves effect because we wanna modify the alpha of that glow. So something like this. And now let's set the directional blur to like say 90. So it, uh, it's a horizontal glow and then just crank it up. Crank it up, crank it up, 
and set the curves to alpha and just play around with this bad boy. You can uh, increase or decrease as much as you want to get these nice streaky streaks. So next let's create the alpha mat for the text. So let's duplicate the displacement here and call it transform. Transform. You can call it whatever you want. I just called it this because it made more sense to me. I'm going to apply an exposure effect to this bad boy. And we're just going to crank the contrast up a lot. So set it to four in exposure, maybe all the way down in gamma. And now in the text layer, let's apply a set matte and double click on that bad boy here and set it to look at the displacement transform and effects and masks and make it look at the luminance because we only want it to look at this in incredible high contrast image. There we go. So see, now we start to get some really interesting glitchiness, right? It's starting to detract and having some different opacity and blend modes, stuff like that. It's really, it's coming together. It's looking a little bit sexy now. So duplicate the text and call it big and put it below the original text here and just delete these effects here. And let's apply a transform effect here. Transform, there we go. And just increase the scale a smidge, something like this. And now let's apply a set matte effect. Double click on that bad boy and make it look at the displacement transform here. Set to look at effects and masks and luminance and invert it actually. We want it to appear where the original text is not or where the original text is not displacing. Now we're gonna apply a curves effect. And just crank up the alpha of this bad boy because we want it to be quite visible. You can play around with this. I just like that it got some more edges and stuff. Now even here, we can apply a new set matte, double click, or you can basically just duplicate, actually just uh, duplicate this original set matte here, put it below, uninvert the matte, because now let's see here with the curves effect, we can actually extend the original alpha. So just crank that bad boy up, something like this, so we get these nice edges. And now let's apply a tint effect tint there we go double click and you can make this like this nice cyan or whatever you want you know to get these nice edges you can even make the black also cyan although it yeah probably doesn't make much of a difference and you see now you get some like extra nice text stuff stuff going on there you can even increase the transform to get more uh, or larger pieces of glitchiness and that's always sexy isn't it and we can even, let's say, duplicate the text here, put it below and call it a glow, something like this. And apply a tint effect here, double click, set it to this nice magenta or something. You can play around with this as much as you want. Apply a directional blur there. There we go. And just once again, set it to noy a and crank up those values, something like this. So we get these nice streaky streaks. So we already got like some nice glitchiness, something like this. So if you find any value in these tutorials, I would greatly appreciate if you gave it a like, since it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps me provide more free tools and more free setups that hopefully you guys can use. And now let's apply the last part of this piece of the comp. So let's duplicate this uh, displacement color here. Duplicate this bad boy. Take it all the way down and call it displacement color background. There we go. And now we're just gonna delete this on mold and delete the set matte. Now we're just going to select all of these and press left to minimize them. Let's start applying some other effects here. So let's start applying exposure, double click and extract double X, bam. And let's put them above everything else or below, I would say below everything else, something like this. So let's start by decreasing the extract here. We can just pull it down until there's almost only the brightest parts. So something like this. Now we can start playing around with cranking up the exposure here. So let's uh, go over here to some frame and just increase the gamma actually all the way up to let's say two or three and just play around with this extract until you reveal some of the brightest spots as you can see here. So it would just glitch around like this and over time they disappear simply due to the contrast. So it's already basically animated. You can already, uh, you can keyframe the gamma correction as much as you want. 
to make it do whatever you want to do. But now we get like these nice, uh, also full screen glitches all over the place. <laughs> so once we have this initial setup, we want to add some additional RGB splits and chromatic aberration. And I've created a script for this. So let's go up into our project here. Let's just put stuff into the precomp uh, folder here. Now that we have these uh, elements here, we're gonna just uh, take this entire composition down into a new composition. Just gonna call it Glitch Tutorial and I'm gonna call this bad boy main instead, the original one I made, and put it into pre comps. There we go. So now we have this entire comp in one big comp. And now we're gonna apply that script I mentioned. So go up into File, Script, and Run Script. I'm going to run the script called Chromatic Aberration Setup. There we go. Double click on that bad boy. The script is available for free. You can just go down into the newsletter. And once you subscribe, you actually have access to the folder with scripts. And there you go. So see what it does is split up the composition into RGB. So it actually splits it up into different RGB colors, as you can see here. And it already has some preset setup settings here. So chroma times is how many times per second it uh, shifts between the chromatic values, as you can see here. The chroma amount is how much it is splitting between the values, as you can see here. You can crank it up or down so you can make some really extreme effects if you want. The initial amount is what the basic, if you go over here where nothing's happening, it's the most basic amount of chromatic aberration you have all the time. So you can set this amount to whatever you want. See, now you just get this nice little edge, as you can see here, around the text constantly, which is nice. Also set up, uh, you can change the RGB order. So, for example, if we go over here where it's glitching, if you don't like the green and magenta values, you can set it to uh, green, blue, red instead. So see, it changes the color order. So you can just play around with this until you're satisfied. So the twitch times is how much it is uh, offsetting on the screen. As you can see here, it is offsetting the images from each other. And this uh, regulates how often that happens and how much it happens. So you can offset the entire screen by quite a lot. Twitch threshold is how sensitive is it to the twitch value, so to speak. So every time it goes over a specific value, it twitches. So if you say the twitch threshold is higher, say 55, it means that it's also gonna twitch less often. It's gonna reveal that twitchiness less often. You can set it up to 100 and it will basically almost never twitch because it's dependent on how much it twitches. So you can play around with this until you're satisfied and it only maybe twitches sometimes as you can see here but then it slowly reveals over time. If you want to receive a mail whenever there are new templates, advanced templates, tools, presets, courses, etc., then I would recommend joining the newsletter. You can find the link in the description. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm looking forward to see what kind of effects and setups you guys can create with this. It would be awesome to see what you guys come up with. And if you like these type of title reveal tutorials or text reveal tutorials, I can recommend the playlist being shown on the left right here. Have a wonderful day with some cheese.